Hi there and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name's Adrian and today we're going to look at the HYSC 210 Scarifier. Scarifying works by removing moss, weeds and thatch, allowing sunlight to reach the grass roots and preparing the lawn for grass seed. The cartridge rotates and the spring times effectively rip the unwanted organic matter and collect it into the 45 litre grass bag for emptying. Scarifying is best suited to the spring and autumn months. On the other side of scarifying is aerating and you will find that the aerating blades are fitted to your machine at present. Aerating is an efficient way of getting moisture and oxygen deep into the soil and encouraging drainage when conditions are wet. The aerator cartridge rotates and claws at the surface, removing any moss or detritus left after the scarifying process and it also collects it into the bag. The robust steel blades can also be set to slice into the soil for increased aeration. This process is recommended regularly for the entire growing season and as and when required. So I've laid the contents of the packaging out on the table for you to see. So first of all, we have the main unit itself with its upper handle attached by some control cables. Now be very careful when lifting it out of the box not to damage these control cables. Secondly, we have the large grass bag. I'll put that to one side. We have the lower handle, which we're going to fit. I shall take you through that. Then we have the user manual. Now I strongly recommend that you read the user manual thoroughly before use. There is a small bag with the nuts and bolts that you're going to need for assembly. And the unit does come with a spark plug spanner. Finally, in a separate box, we have the scarifier blade. Now the unit is fitted with the aerating knife blade as it arrives to you. And you can fit, obviously, the scarifier blade. And there is a separate video on how to do this. And that's the contents of your packaging. So the first thing we're going to do is to fit this lower handle. We're going to need these two short bolts with the nuts that are in the packet and two of the bolts with the black knobs and you will also need a 13 millimeter spanner or socket for this. So on the one side of the lower handle you will see this pigtail. This needs to go on this side of the machine, the right hand side from the operator position. I'm going to place the handle down on the bench here and I'll take one of the short bolts, pass it through from the outside of the machine to the inside and just loosely fasten the nut on the inside. So I'll do exactly the same on the other side, pass the bolt through from the outside, through the hole and loosely fasten the nut for the time being. So now we can take one of the longer bolts with a black nut, just take them apart, lift the handle up into the approximate position. Now for the taller operator you could put this bolt in the lower hole, for the shorter operator such as myself you can put the bolt in the higher hole. Okay, so again washer on and the nut screwed on on the inside. So I'll do exactly the same thing on the other side. So in the same hole, in with the bolt first, on with the washer, and on with the nut. So I'll just tighten the two black nuts now, one on each side, and it's at this point I can now tighten up the 13 mil nut. No need to over tighten these as that may crush the pipe but as long as they're nice and firmly tight so that the pipe is fully clamped to the black bracket. So next we're going to fit the upper to the lower handle. Again being very careful with the control cables not to snag them. I'm going to put one of the remaining bolts from the inside to the out over there 
and just locate that over the hole. I'll just bring this handle down into the same position, take another bolt from the inside, line up the holes, put the bolt in position. I can just hold the handle there and again, bit of nut and washer onto the outside this time. Exactly the same on this side, on with the washer and tighten up the nut. And that's the upper handle fitted. A little bit of tidying up now. I'll just pull these little clips off the bar and place them neatly over the cables. That's that one in place. And the same on the other side. A little plastic clip again. Just bring the uh, little cable over here out of the way. And that's perfectly safe now and isn't going to get damaged. One thing I will show at this point is that the cables are passing over the top of this bar. If you have them passing underneath, when you fold the handles over, you're likely to damage them by pulling them around the bar. So in this configuration, if I just loosen off the black knobs, if you fold the handle up, you're not going to damage the cables. So the next step in the procedure is to put engine oil and petrol in your machine. Now it's vitally important that you do add engine oil as it's shipped to you with no engine oil in it. It does have a low oil protection circuit, however we do need to put engine oil in the engine. Any 15W40 or SAE30 petrol engine oil would suffice, however I'm going to use this 4-stroke SAE30 petrol engine oil which is specially recommended for Hyundai Power Products and this oil is readily available from our parts department. To fill the engine oil, we need to remove this plug. By turning it anti-clockwise, we can remove the plug. Now we need to fill with engine oil until the oil level reaches the weir point of this hole. Theoretically, so we can't get any more in without it overflowing back out again. So at the bottom edge of the threads here, we want to come up to that level. So I've got some of the engine oil in a suitable jug here with a pouring spout but a funnel and a piece of pipe would do just the same job. So I'm just going to slowly start filling the engine oil. Not rushing it, just giving it time. And I'm going to check the oil level periodically. Needs more yet. And as you can see, I've got a piece of paper towel here, just in case I should spill any. So yeah, more. So there we are, it's topped up now and it's right up to this point here. And now I can replace the plug. Again, turning in clockwise and securing it firmly. Now there is another identical plug on the back of the engine. We don't need to worry about that. That's there should this engine be used in another application. So next, we're going to top up the fuel tank. We'll take the fuel cap anti-clockwise and you can remove the cap. Now I'm going to fill it with fresh unleaded petrol. No additives, but fresh fuel. I've got half a litre or about three quarters of a litre here. Should be enough for my purposes. When fueling your scarifier, always do it outdoors in a well-ventilated area and obviously not near any sources of ignition. And to replace the cap, you simply line up the two tabs with the two slots in the top of the tank and again turn it clockwise to secure the cap. Let's have a look at a few of the controls on your machine. Here on the front of the engine we have the on-off switch and as you'd imagine it does exactly what it says, it turns it on and off. In the off position obviously the engine won't start, you need to turn it into the on position to start the engine and again when you finish with the unit you can turn it off here. Also on the handlebars we have this lever here which engages the cut so when it's back here in its present position that lifts the scarifier up and it won't cut anything when you want to engage the cut, you put
put the lever forward, that will drop the scarifier and it will start cutting. So that's disengaged from cut and slide the lever forward. As you can see, the scarifier would drop down and commence cutting. To stop cutting, pull the lever back and it all rises up to stop the cut. Three further controls for the engine. Obviously here we have the recoil itself. This upper lever is the choke lever. That would be choke on, that would be choke off. So for a cold start, we would need the choke to the left. That's the choke on. And once started, we would push it to the right. Again, the lower lever is the fuel tap. To the left is off, to the right is on. When storing your machine, always tip switch the fuel to the left, the off position. To fit the grass bag to your machine, you will see your grass bag has two hooks. And on the mower, there are two little slots, one either side. So to fit the bag, you just slot the bag into the slots and close the flap. So let's look at a cold start. First of all, we would need to turn the engine on, on the red switch. We need the fuel on, that's to the right, and we need the choke on, that's to the left. Okay. We also need to pull the OPC lever back. Done. I've got the scarifier in the up position, obviously, as I don't wish to scarify my deck. And then I can pull the recoil until I feel resistance. There. Go back in and start the machine. And as you saw, once it had started, I turned the choke off fairly quickly. And to stop the machine, I released the OPC lever. For a warm start, exactly the same procedure, switch on, fuel on, it's only run for a short period, so I'll turn the choke perhaps three quarters on at this stage, pull back on the OPC. And that's a hot and cold start on your scarifier. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and happy gardening.